What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect here. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can create some helicopter dust waves inside of Blender utilizing an operator from the Chaos add-on. This tutorial is a special request from Pilot Movies. He commented on one of our other tutorial videos, so be sure to check out his channel. This tutorial is surprisingly easy once you understand the concepts, so let's get started. One of the first things I like to do when I'm trying to create something in the computer that has some real life references would be to look at those references themselves. So I've just done a simple Google search for helicopter dust waves and uh, we have a few images here to take a look at and obviously video is even better. So take a look at videos of whatever you're trying to create as well. But obviously I can go through here and kind of see what we're going for. And then we have kind of a reference in our minds to uh, try to recreate inside the computer. So as you can see, there are some you know CG versions of this dust wave here along with some even real life uh, footage on some of these as well anyways guys let's get started inside of blender this is the starting scene that we have here and we have this helicopter model by Chris Kuhn here check him out on blender market he has some really awesome blender models but obviously you can use whatever model you would like and uh, I've just animated it to kind of fly down here and then land on the blender grid here and uh, pretty simple animation if you download this same helicopter all of the controls and rigs come with it so we should have checked him out but I'm not going to go through animating the helicopter itself I'm just going to go through creating the dust wave and showing you how to simulate that whole process um, anyways let's go ahead and the first thing we're going to do is add a ground plane for our dust to interact with so I'll go ahead and open up our chaos tab here and uh, as you probably know we have our collision objects built into our scene here we'll go ahead and add a collision cube to the middle of our scene here and we'll just scale this down on the z-axis and we're just going to make a kind of a ground plane for our helicopter to land on. This collision cube is going to both interact with both our particle systems and any dust and fire that we add to the scene. Of course, as you probably know, I've said it before, if you want to make another object in your scene interact like our collision cube here, all you have to do is go under your physics tab and enable the fluid dynamics option as well as the collision physics. Once you do that, your particles and you know any smoke you add to your scene will interact with it just like they do for our collision cube operator here we just decided to add that to our add-on to make it a much more streamlined process for anyone trying to create simulations uh, anyways this is a nice little ground plane we have here and uh, whenever you're creating any kind of dust or fire or smoke inside of your computer with particles it's important to think about generally what the base of that simulation would look like you might think that you would want to add some wind to your scene and then maybe create just like some kind of mesh that's emitting some smoke or dust or something like that and then use that wind force field to uh, blow the dust in different directions but actually whenever we use particles it's actually much easier to get the smoke or dust or fire or whatever you're adding to your scene to act the way you want it to because it's kind of essentially just sculpting that original base mesh for your simulation and that's essentially what chaos is it's just streamlining that whole process for you anyways let's go ahead and add an operator to our scene to create this dust wave first we'll go ahead and scroll through our animation here and just find the right time for when we want our dust wave to start so I think probably around let's say frame 26 maybe or 25 even uh, so I'll go ahead and select that point on our timeline here and then since we want to add our dust wave right below the helicopter we'll just select our 3d cursor right below the helicopter and uh, then we'll go to our chaos tab here we'll go ahead and select the dynamic smoke checkbox and we'll scroll down here to our particle parameters and uh, we'll leave a lot of these the same as we usually do but um, I'm going to scale the particle amount maybe to something like uh, we'll scale by 1000 one of the things you're going to notice is that when we're creating this dust wave for this uh, helicopter is that we're going to need a constant stream of particles as the force from the rotor blades going down on the dust is constant of course until you know the helicopter you know shuts down its engine or whatever so we're going to need a lot more particles because our particle simulation is going to last longer in our scene so we're going to scale up the amount of particles We'll also scale up the emission time since we're going to need the particles to be emitted for a longer period of time, again until our helicopter rotors turn off. So we'll go ahead and scale up our emission time for the particles to something like 50. 
And uh, for the rest of these settings, we'll have the particle life at one, the particle start size at one, the particle end size at one, fuel start amount at one, fuel end amount at one, and then at the end here under the velocity parameters, we'll have the initial starting velocity at one and initial ending velocity at one as well. And uh, this is pretty important as we want our dust to have the same velocity as our particle system. As a default in the chaos add-on, we have these starting velocities, I think at 0.25, so your explosions don't blast everywhere and they're a little more controllable. But for this specific dust wave tutorial, we're going to need to increase these to one and uh, it'll give a much uh, nicer looking result. So we'll go ahead and adjust these settings here and then we'll go ahead up to the 360 ground burst operator Operator here and then just click on it and uh, now as you can see here we have our custom domain cube here as well as if we move in here we can see our 360 ground burst operator here and we'll just select both of these and we'll just bring it up for now and I'll go ahead and scale up our domain cube and uh, we want to surround any area that we're gonna add dust to with our smoke domain cube so we'll go ahead and scale it up push it up something like this and we're just creating a uh, simulation area for our dust to uh, be simulated inside so anywhere where we might want dust to be we want to put this smoke domain around you're just creating that simulation area so that should be pretty safe again it kind of up to experimentation depending on how far you want your dust wave to go and uh, now let's go ahead and select our 360 ground burst particle system and uh, if we play through it here really quick we can see that it's kind of just blasting upwards right now and that's obviously not what we want it to do for our dust wave so instead what we want these particles to do is blast outward along our plane here and then just kind of spew dust from directly underneath the helicopter here so one of the ways we can do that is we can go zoom in here to our operator here and I'll go ahead and go to the particle setting tab here and I like to change my viewport display for my particles to cross just so we can see them a little bit better just a little bit easier to work with and uh, we'll go ahead and scale up our 360 ground burst operator here and what we'll do is we'll actually press R and we'll rotate it 180 degrees on the x-axis and we'll flip it upside down and now we have something like this we'll go ahead and scale it on the z-axis down so that now if we play through it again here it's blasting outward directly along our plane here, like you would expect the wind forces from the helicopter blades to do to dust in a similar environment. So essentially we're just creating the initial forces for the dust to blast out from the force of the helicopter blades. And uh, one thing I'm noticing here is that our particles aren't going out quite as far as we want. So I'll go ahead and go to the particle tab here and I'll uh, go ahead and go to the lifetime of our particles here. And I'll increase this to something like 10 and now scroll through it here one more time and uh, now that's looking much better and they're dying off right when we want that plume to start there's a lot of room for experimentation here you don't have to do it exactly like I'm doing but this is just the general concept behind creating a dust wave like this All right, so this is looking pretty good here. I might decrease the number of particles in our operator here to something like maybe half of this or around 40,000, just so we have a little bit less particles, something like that. And now what we want to do is actually animate our 360 ground burst operator here that's emitting these particles to move according to how the helicopter is moving. So what we'll do here is we'll just go back to the starting point. We'll start at frame 25, just so we start a little bit before. And we'll just kind of put this We'll just grab it here and we'll put it right below the helicopter and uh, as you can see here when we go forward the helicopter kind of pulls back a little bit and the trajectory of the wind would be a little bit more forward than it would uh, be backwards right that's why the dust tends to accumulate more to the front of the helicopter versus in the back so to emulate that what we're going to do is near the start of our simulation here we'll go ahead and rotate our 360 ground burst operator here so that it's also going to blast more particles goes up like this here and uh, then as you can see here when we play through it our particles blast a little bit more upward near the front of our helicopter kind of like you would expect our wind to force dust to do in the same situation so we'll go ahead and go back to frame 26 here and while our 360 ground burst operator is selected we'll just press I and then add a location rotation and scale keyframe 
and uh, then we'll just go to different points along our animation here and add new keyframes for our particle system. So since our helicopter is moving more ahead now, we'll go ahead and move our particle system up as well. And uh, maybe at this point we can bring our 360 ground burst a little bit more flat in the scene since our helicopter is about to uh, rotate down as well. And then we'll add another keyframe. So we'll press I, add another location, rotation, and scale. And uh, now as you can see here, it's going with the helicopter here. And uh, we're just gonna go ahead and keep adding keyframes for our operator here and keeping it below the helicopter. And uh, I'll add another one here. Just keep it right below essentially the rotor blades. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to add a lot of keyframes. It just has to generally match where you would expect that dust to go depending on the helicopter animation. All right, and that should be pretty good. That's our setup for our particle system to create our dust wave. And uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to select our smoke domain, go through some of the smoke domain settings and simulate our original base mesh and uh, see what we get. First, I'll go ahead and save our project here just in case Blender crashes for whatever reason. So I'll go to file, save and uh, I've already named my project, but obviously you'll want to do that as well. And uh, then we'll go ahead and select our smoke domain again, and we'll go to the physics properties tab here. And this is where we can change our domain settings. I think a lot of the domain settings that come as a default with the chaos smoke domain should work pretty well, but we'll go ahead and change a few of them here. We'll leave the resolution divisions at 196 for this specific example, but feel free to increase this number if you want a little bit larger scale of a look. Um, then I'll go ahead and scroll down here. We'll go to the smoke settings tab here and uh, we'll bring the heat down to zero. And uh, for buoyancy density, we're going to make it just 0.1. What the buoyancy density does is the higher this number is, the more the smoke is going to float up in the air. And uh, since we're going for a more of a dust look, we want to keep this number pretty low. And we could even set it at zero and it might be even better. But for my tests, I put it at 0.1 and that creates a pretty good looking effect. And uh, we'll also go ahead and select the dissolve setting here. And uh, that's just so our dust will dissolve over time. Uh, it's not really necessary, but since we're going for that dust look and not a really thick cloud of smoke, I'm going to go ahead and select it for this specific example. And uh, I'm going to leave adaptive domain on, but uh, if you get any glitches, you may want to deselect adaptive domain, so just keep that in mind. I'm going to actually change the vorticity to 0.1 here, and that's just going to give the smoke a little more turbulence by default. And uh, since the smoke should be moving around pretty quickly due to the helicopter blades and all the wind that's going on, I think that should be pretty good. Um, but it's important not to increase this number too much. And uh, yeah, we'll just go ahead and we'll go down to the cache here. We'll select this uh, little output cache button here and we'll just choose where we want to save our simulation data. So I'll go ahead and I'll go to the folder where I saved this project. I have a folder here called Helicopter Dust Wave 2 Cache and I'll just save it under this folder, but you'll want to create a folder of your own. And uh, now here we want to choose the frames in which we want to simulate our dust wave. So since we started our dust wave at around frame 24, I'll go ahead and simulate this for about four seconds. So I'll go ahead and put it at maybe something like 130. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. We'll go ahead and press file and save. And then we'll go ahead and up here under our smoke domain and press bake data and then give your computer some time to simulate this dust wave. All right guys, so I briefly paused our simulation here just to see what we're getting so far. And uh, sometimes I'll just pause the simulation just to make sure that my computer doesn't bake an entire simulation only to find out that I don't really like the result. And I think our particles are doing pretty much what we want them to do here, but I'd like to make a few adjustments and uh, rebake the simulation to get it looking a little bit better. And uh, I think our smoke here is looking a little bit too small in scale and it's just billowing up a little bit too early and it's just rising a little bit too quickly as well. So we're gonna go ahead and make a few adjustments here. So first we'll go ahead and select our smoke domain here and then we'll go ahead and free the bake and then we'll go ahead and select our particle system first and we'll make a few adjustments to our particle system here. We'll go to the particle settings tab and I'll go ahead and we'll just increase the lifetime of our particles to something like 15. And uh, this is just going to let our particles go out a little bit further before they die off creating a little bit more distance between our helicopter and where our dust accumulates. And uh, now we'll go ahead and select the smoke domain again. And we'll go ahead and increase our resolution divisions a little bit just to get a little bit of a larger scale look. So I'll go ahead and increase this to something like 280. 
and then I'll go ahead and scroll down here and I feel like the smoke was rising a little bit too quickly in the paused version of our simulation so I'm going to go ahead and decrease the buoyancy density down to zero and I'll go ahead and select our vorticity as well and we'll change this to 0.05 and this will just make sure that the smoke doesn't dissipate quite as quickly. And uh, now we'll go ahead and uh, once again we'll just press bake data and then give some time for our computer to simulate that dust wave. And again I think the concept in our initial setup was pretty good but I think this is just going to make it look quite a bit better and uh, give it a little bit of a larger scale feel. So for you it may require some experimentation mostly with the resolution divisions and the buoyancy density here. But just keep in mind that these are the general concepts in creating your dust wave. Alright guys, so we are back here and this is our initial dust wave result and I'd say it's looking pretty good here so we're going to go ahead and preview it in real time using our OpenGL render active viewport option. Uh, before we do that, I like to select the smoke domain really quick and our smoke is showing up pretty thick in the viewport here so I want to just go down here and under the physics properties here we'll just scroll down to viewport display here and uh, we'll just change the thickness to something like 100 instead, maybe something like even like 70. And now as you can see it's uh, much less uh, thick and it's giving a much more realistic result for what we're going for. And uh, now we're just going to go ahead and do that OpenGL render active viewport option to play back our smoke in real time before we bake that high resolution noise on top of our original smoke simulation. So we'll go ahead and go to view and viewport render animation. And now Blender is going to go through in preview mode and render out all of our frames so we can play it back in real time and get an idea of what our smoke is doing before we bake that high resolution noise on top of it. All right, so now that Blender is done going through all the frames, we'll go ahead and close our window here and we'll just go to render and view animation. And now Blender will play it back for us in real time. And I'd say it's looking pretty cool here. I think the starting result is pretty good. The one thing that I would change if I were to bake this again would be that dissolve. I think it's dissolving off a little too quickly at the end here. And then I might increase the domain resolution just a little bit more so that our smoke doesn't bundle up quite as much at the end here. But I think since we're going for that thinner dust wave look, like we're landing in a desert of some kind, I think this is gonna work pretty well once we work on the materials and render it out. So I'll go ahead and uh, close the window here for now. And uh, now we'll just go ahead and select our domain cube really quick. And I'll just go back to the smoke domain settings here under the physics panel. And we'll go to the noise tab. And we'll go ahead and check the noise checkbox. And it's up to you how much you want to increase the detail of your smoke simulation using the upres factor here. I'm going to go ahead and use an upres factor of 2 for this specific example. And that should be pretty good for some medium to wide shots. But if you're going to do some closer shots, I might try an upres factor of 3 or 4. And I'll go ahead and just, once again, we'll go ahead and save our project here just to make sure we don't lose anything. And then I'll go ahead and press bake noise. And then once again, we'll give our computer some time to bake our noise on top of the original smoke mesh. Alright guys, so we are back and we have baked our high resolution noise on top of our original smoke volume. Now let's get into our smoke domain materials to get a nice looking final render. So I'll go ahead and select the smoke domain here and then I'll go into the shading tab here. And uh, make sure that you're under the cycles render option here under viewport shading and make sure you've switched to cycles rendering option and uh, your light paths volume bounces are at at least four of course the higher the better that's just going to help your light bounce around your smoke some more and then make sure i usually change under volumes the step size to 0.05 and then the max steps to 260 and uh, now we'll go ahead and as you can see here our smoke is super thick right now and it's not looking very good so we're going to go ahead and adjust some of our smoke settings under the chaos fire shader here so I'll go ahead and first I'll go ahead and decrease the contrast to one and I'll bring the smoke density down to something like uh, we'll try something like 50 and we'll also go ahead and change the color to maybe a tan color since uh, we're going for like a dust wave look totally depends on what you're going for here Maybe something like that. We'll see how that looks. We'll go ahead and decrease the density some more, just since it's uh, pre still pretty dense right now. Maybe something like 15. And uh, since we added a lot of particles to our scene, it makes sense that the smoke is super dense, despite the fact that our density values are pretty low. All right, so this result is looking pretty good here. I think the smoke might be a little bit too dense right now. So I'm going to adjust a few more settings right now and see if I can get a little bit better result. And then we're going to add a camera and do a test render to see the real details within the simulation. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust the materials a little bit more. And then I'll let you guys know what the final material settings are for this specific example.
All right, guys, so in experimenting with the smoke domain settings, I decided on a smoke density of four and a smoke contrast of four and a smoke color of around this tan uh, dust looking color. And I think it's going to look pretty good here. So now we're going to go ahead and add a camera and output our final animation. So I'll go ahead and go into solid mode here and I'll just go through our scene setup here really quick. Our scene setup is comprised of this one area light here and uh, we put it at a power of around 100,000. And uh, then under the environment tab, we have a sky texture with a strength of 2.2 just for some ambient lighting and uh, then we have this ground plane I also changed the color of the ground plane to a uh, diffused material with a kind of a dark gray color and a roughness of 0.5 and I'm going to go ahead and change this material to a shadows only plane so I'll go ahead and go to uh, the object properties tab here and I'll go to visibility and go ahead and select shadow catcher and now that plane is only going to render the shadows that fall on it and not actually render the materials itself so we can composite it, this on top of whatever background we want and uh, now we'll go ahead and go back to layout mode really quick and I'll go ahead and press shift a and add a camera and we're just going to put this camera off to the left here something like this and I'll go ahead and view through the camera and I'll just rotate it up a little bit something like this and I'll go to the camera setting tab here We'll uh, do a little bit of a longer lens look for this specific animation. So I'll go ahead and change the focal length to something like 85. And then I'll go ahead and drag our camera back a little bit. And we want to make sure that near the end of our animation, we're getting everything as well. So I'll go around frame 100 here. And uh, something like this should be pretty good. I'll go ahead and increase the size of our ground plane here a little bit. So we cover our whole camera. And uh, now I'm going to go ahead and go to our camera setting tab here. For this animation, we'll go ahead and render it at 32 samples. Of course, the higher the samples, the more quality we'll get, but it will take more time. And I'll leave most of these as they were before, as I mentioned before, with our volume bounces at 6 and our max step size at 0.05 and max steps at 260. And uh, under the output tab, we'll go ahead and increase our resolution uh, percentage to 100% at 1920 by 1080. I will use the OpenEXR file format with an alpha channel as well. And I'll go ahead and uh, choose where we want to save our animation. And I have a folder here for our animation. So make sure you just create a new folder for your animation output and then name your project file and then accept. And uh, now just make sure that your project timeline includes the frames that you want rendered and then I'll go ahead and press render and render image and uh, give your computer some time to render out this image and then finally we'll go ahead and render our animation in its entirety once we take a look at this initial result. All right, guys, so I paused the render briefly just to see what we're getting so far, and it's looking pretty cool. I'd say this is going to look really awesome composited on top of whatever background we decide to put it in. So I'm going to go ahead and close it, and then finally to export your final animation before you do your composite, you would just go to render and then render animation. Probably do this overnight so your computer has some time to render out all your frames, but then you will have your final animation to composite in a software of your choice. Anyways, guys, that's it for this video. I hope it was helpful. As always, feel free to leave any comments if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below i always love to know what you guys would like to learn next so be sure to give those recommendations in the comment section below as well and i'll see you guys next time